All right, guys, welcome back, and uh, we are in part nine now of the uh, first playthrough of Dark Souls. Now, we are going into a place today that is absolutely just horrid. It is a very difficult level. I honestly don't suggest going down to do it, in all honesty, but you know what? We are going to best this level today. We are going to trek into the dark, and we are going to defeat this place. Now, let me run through my setup real quick. Just a brief, uh, brief overview. The things that I, uh, well, I may as well tell you where we're going. We are going to the, uh, we're going to the place that's underneath, uh, Hades Tower of Flame. It's called, uh, it's called, like, No Man's Cave, or No Man's something like that. No, no Man's Cove, maybe. I don't know. I forget the name. I've only been there once. But, uh, I played through it on an account off-screen, my my uh, mage character that I did off screen, I went down there and it is tough, but I did figure it out. So, the things that I highly recommend you have for this place are three good weapons. I have a plus four fire long sword, specifically for fire weak enemies. I've got my uh, Hade Knight sword plus four, of course, the trusty Hade Knight sword. And I have a halberd plus two for some heavy damage um, behind range. You can also turtle stab with the halberd in this game, that's a new mechanic. You definitely want a bow with arrows for this place, and you need a good shield. I highly recommend uh, investing 16 strength for the uh, Dranglet shield. It blocks 100% physical damage, it has uh, pretty mild resistance to everything, 70 durability. It does waste 6 units, which is kind of bad, but it uh, it has 55 stability, which is crazy. That's that's really good for the beginning of the game. That's most uh, that's more than the great shield that you can buy from the merchant, and that thing doesn't even block 100% physical damage. But this thing does. This shield is a walking fortress compared to it, it makes you a walking fortress compared to most other shields in the beginning of the game. You definitely want this. I uh, I have my elite knight armor, uh, just the helmet. I have the uh, the dranglick mail. I have the uh, leather gloves because they're light and I don't want to be overburdened. If you hit 70% equip burden, that is your maximum to do the fast roll. Uh, if you go over 70%, even .01, you may not use uh, the fast roll anymore. You officially start fat rolling and it's bad. And then I also have the Dranglick leggings. So overall, we've got some pretty good stats. They have excellent defense, but they are kind of heavy. So that is my setup. You need torches for this place. I'm going to stress that very heavily right now. You need torches, and we've got 46 minutes and 28 seconds of torch. That'll be plenty. But the other thing that you want to have is these flame butterflies, because you, there are not fire sources all over the place down there. You may end up getting stuck with only the bonfire as a source of lighting your torch. So bring flame butterflies, and uh, light some spots up so that you can uh, not have to waste all of your flame butterflies. You can use a torch on anything that you light with that torch. Uh, my Estus is up to four. I'll keep my white sight, my uh, white sign soapstone equipped just in case I'm getting invaded. That way I can switch to that and see if uh, I'm getting invaded. Of course, you've got your life gems. The green blossom is, it is very, very potent in this game. I know it was really useful for PvP in Dark Souls, and that's about it. But in this game, the green blossom. It's, it's very life-changing, because I often catch myself uh, blocking an enemy, and then when I attack, I run out of stamina too quick. The stamina impede in this game is much worse than Dark Souls. So this Green Blossom is going to help substantially against groups of enemy uh, enemies where you're getting just clobbered and you're hiding behind your shield. They're going to eat through your endurance, and then you also need stamina to attack. So these, uh, these Green Blossoms stacked with my Claranthe Ring we should be able to manage our stamina pretty well. Uh, the Aromatic Ooze, the only weapon I have that I can use this on is the Halberd, but it'll be great for doing tons of damage. I've also got a Gold Pine Resin just in case. The Poison Moss is required for this place because there are barrels full of poison down there, or, well, uh, man-sized pots, we'll call them. And they're just full of poison if you break them. And I also have the Human Effigies. Make sure you have arrows. Please, please make sure you have arrows. And uh, Bolts as well if you have a crossbow. I would recommend a bow though because it has a more flexible targeting system. So aside from that, make sure that you, uh, my equip burden is 666, that's kind of creepy, but uh, 
make sure that you can roll like this. At all costs, make sure you can fat roll. Or not fat, ah, damn it, I can't talk today. Make sure you can fast roll. You don't want the fat roll, is it? Now, one important thing that I picked up when we were in uh, the Hades Tower of Flame, and I'm sorry I'm cutting away from that place. I really wanted to fight the second boss fight and show it to you guys. And uh, it's a familiar boss, and you guys would really enjoy it, but I'm saving that for when Seth returns, and I'm going to uh, do that with him. So, one important thing we picked up from Hades Tower Flame is we picked this up from the second old knight. He uses a blunt weapon, a giant maze, and he only spawns once because he has a 100% chance to drop this. It's a uh, sublime bone dust, you burn it in a bonfire to upgrade Estus, but you can only burn it at the Majula bonfire. You can only use this at the Majula Bonfire, keep that in mind. Now the purpose of this stuff when you burn it is, uh, it doesn't do what an Estus Flask Shard does. An Estus Flask Shard gives you one more flask from the Emerald Herald. If you burn the Sublime Bone Dust at the Bonfire, it will strengthen your flask, not, uh, it won't increase quantity, it will increase quality. It will plus one your Estus Flask, which is really good. We definitely want that. And uh, these things are very scarce. They're the uh, the rate at which you get these items is very uh, it's very spaced out in this game. So uh, there are actually a couple things that I need to do before I go running down there. It won't take long. It may, it might take ten minutes maximum. But I have uh, three of those uh, silky smooth stones that I would love to give to Snugly because you get random items because of that. And then once I get rid of that, I am actually going to take a trip back to the Forest of Fallen Giants because there is a door that I wasn't able to open up that I am going to cover. There's also a wall that I need to destroy there. And uh, let's see, what else do I need to do? I need... I needed something, I just can't remember what. I'll remember it before I get there. I love being able to run up ladders in this game, and the fact that you don't fall down if you run out of stamina is amazing. I love that. Look, I know, I know, I know that you tell me what to do. Okay, now you can only leave one of these at a time, and don't be stupid like me. Don't hit the discard, it's different than the leave. If you discard it, it is gone forever. Make sure you hit the leave button, and only do one at a time. Okay, I got a life gem that's useful. I'm I'm hoping for I'm hoping for mostly useful items from these series of trades. Hopefully, I will. Okay, uh, amber herbs. Okay, not quite what I was aiming for. Ah. Well, that was nice. I accidentally used it. That was bad. Okay. Well, I'm not even sure what it did, but... Maybe it gave me souls. I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh, well. Now we need to run back. And, uh... Out of, out of all the places I've gone off-screen on my separate character just for exploring and stuff, I... Eh, I covered a pretty decent amount. Not uh, not nearly past where uh, Seth is right now. He actually got really, really far. And I hate the fact that he was doing it in the same room as me because he spoiled a lot of shit for me. But, I mean, eh. What can you do, right? So now, we need to warp to the, uh, the Forest of Fallen Giants because there's a door that we're going to open up. And, uh, well... Because I think I might be able to open it. We'll see. And there's also a shortcut that we need to take care of. So there. And Cardinal Tower is where we need to go. Now, aside from that, I am 100% positive that we have covered... Oh, that was that item I needed. That one... I Do you guys remember that one item back in the beginning of the Forest of Fallen Giants that I was screaming at right before I fought the Hade Knight. I was screaming at that item saying, mark my words, I'm going to get that item. Well, we're going to get that damn item today because there is a way to get it that I absolutely did not think of at all and I feel really unintelligent for doing that, but you guys will see. It's going to be totally worth it. 
Hello, Melincha. You? Okay, ba, 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 ba. Fire bombs, baby. Give me. Eh, we can get more than that. Well, 2,000 souls isn't a whole lot. Um. I really don't need that many, though. Give me six. I'll settle for that. Alright, now, see this wall right here? We're gonna destroy this wall as soon as we get to the other side of it. What's up, guys? Yeah, get on up here. Okay, now, you guys are probably waiting for a justification, but... Ah! Nope! Nope! Ah! Okay, this is going horribly. Stop that! No, you don't... You don't get to escape me. Uh, I know that you guys have heard a lot of this already, but um, you guys have probably heard this enough from me, but what I want you guys to do is, if you're really, really far ahead of me in this game, as in, you've been, you've been, like, way past where I am, whatever you do, don't, don't post, like, mass spoilers in the comments. I'm trying to refrain from, uh, putting a bunch of spoilers in my video titles, because a lot of people are really just, you know, really, I'm not gonna say defensive or anything, over their access to spoilers, but, I mean, a lot of people really, really don't want, like, incredibly crazy spoilers for this game, so, I mean, by all means, I can't really control what you do, but, okay, that, that's it right there. I didn't think to try this, but, apparently it works, what do you know? And we get, soul of Nameless Soldier and Throwing Knives, I am very okay with all of that. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, well. Okay. Um. Yeah, We're really close anyway. There's there's no point in warping or anything. We can just run right back to that bonfire. Uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. The spoilers thing. Just for, you know, the respect of other people that are watching these videos and stuff. And for me, too. For me, too. I... To be honest, I really hate spoilers when it comes to New Souls games. I mean, I really do. So, if you... There's nothing wrong with telling me I missed an item. Like, if I missed a, a good piece of equipment or a key item for, you know, whatever. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Like, you can say, hey, you missed this over here. And you should go grab that in the next video. Or something like that if you notice that I missed something pretty important. But, for, uh... For my sake, I would, uh... I would much request that you don't give away, you know, boss information or, you know, stuff like that. Very huge key points in the storyline. It would be very nice if you left some of that stuff to my leisure so that I can find out for myself. Now, I was experimenting off screen. Those things have so much health. I mean, just watch this. Well, actually, I'm not going to waste a good arrow. I'll use a weak arrow. Now that's that's a cool bow mechanic too. Is you, what the hell do you think you're doing? Just what the hell do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? Those are your free hits. For feeling like a hero, those are your free hits. I'll give you those. Now die. Huh. Anyway. Uh, I don't really trust you either. This really cool bow mechanic is that you can have two sets of arrows equipped at the same time. You do not have to swap between them. You can hit the uh, top shoulder button. It'll be the uh, it'll be the top trigger if you're on Xbox, and it'll be R1 if you're on PlayStation. 
for your first arrow on the left, but the uh, the right arrow, the ones that have the white feathers, you would hit either R2 or the right bumper to use those. So it's really, really cool. It's a great mechanic. So we're going to... Ah, that sucked. Get up. Nap time is over, bud. Okay, now as I was saying, I did some experimenting off screen with the cat ring. You can make that fall with the cat ring. It is very possible. You can either drop down right here, take those items, or there's actually uh, elevated ground over there that you can drop down to, especially over here as well. But those things have so much health. I'm not even kidding. He looked right up at me. He's like, hey, you talking about me? He knows I am. Check this out. Look at that. You can, even with my good arrows, nothing. You can sit here and you can shoot at this thing all day. It's going to be like trying to kill the drake or cut the drake's tail off in Dark Souls again. Or the, the red dragon, like the flame scale dragon in uh, Demon Souls, shooting him on the bridge. It's going to be like that all over again. It's going to take forever. So you can survive the fall with the cat ring because the cat ring is an absolute godsend in this game. You can access all kinds of cool places you would otherwise not be able to with that ring. It's wonderful. But these uh, those items down there, there's, uh, I believe, the one directly in the center is a pyromancy spell, and the one way over there against the wall is a... Uh, that's a sword, or a shield. It's a great shield. I went and grabbed them off screen while I was experimenting. But, uh... There's actually more down that way, as you can see. I don't want to fall. I really don't want to fucking fall. Uh, as you can see, the floor under us is open. There's, I mean, there's a whole area that goes way back that way, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. There, there's a whole area that goes back that way, and it goes way back that way. And there are tons of those giant salamanders. It sucks. It, I'm telling you, it sucks. You don't want to go messing with them. They don't die. They don't die. So, don't ever forget about this guy. He'll follow you, and he will ruin your progress. So, I covered this whole area previously. I got every single item over there. We exhausted Kale's dialogue, and we got him over to the mansion. And I'm not sure what else is going to happen with him. But, aside from that... Now, they, they always have a three-hit combo. So, if you don't want to go near the halberd guy, just wait for the three-hit combo, and voila. Now, this guy, since he always throws the firebombs, bait him over here towards these barrels, and you get a secret opening. But he has bad aim, so... Wow, he hit them and it didn't even work. There we go. I had a bit of a Bruce Willis moment right there. Where is my... Never mind. I don't... Oh, hey, he came down here to me. Decided to drop down on my terms. Didn't you, bud? Okay, so yeah, it blew up the wall. So we now are at the Malentia Bonfire. It's called Cardinal Tower is what the name is. But I call it the Malentia Bonfire because this is where you find Malentia, the merchant. So... Aside from that... We have unfinished business over here. I hate that part. They always end up trying to shoot me. Even though he gets shot, I never see him die to that. And they don't come down the ladder after you, so all you have to do is worry about all these guys. Nah, I'm not doing this the right way, but... I mean, you guys get it. The jump attacks are superb in this game. And he's not going to follow us. Jump attacks are superb in this game. They still do a ton of damage. And there's usually a fourth guy that lingers around in here if you don't count. Alright, now I believe I have the key to this door. I'm pretty sure I picked it up recently in one of the last videos. Let me look. It should be 
Yeah, the antiquated key. I don't remember where I got this, but for some reason I have faith that it's going to open up this door. Are you kidding me? Spent all this time running through the forest of giants, picking up every key I can find, and none of them unlock this door. I mean, you know what? Fuck this door. Ugh, I'm done. Whatever. <sighs> Let's go. Wait. Did you guys hear that? Pretty sure I heard that. Do you hear that? Ah! Are you serious? <clears throat> Man. Okay, parry fail. Well. When in doubt, knock knock. Ah, get out of here. Get out of here. I'm not getting ganked. Not today. Oh, hey. We got a spear guy. Okay. Yeah, he's playing turtle. Go ahead. Turtle it up. Boosh. That didn't work. Get your shield down. There we go. I loved doing that to the uh, the guy that I accidentally invaded. <laughs> that was pretty cool. The guy that I was in uh, the... I, th I think it was called the Grave of Saints. Is that what it was called? Okay, we got a life ring and we got large Titanite shards. That's awesome. I'm very glad we got that from the chest because I need to... I need to upgrade my sword to plus five. Hopefully I can get it there. That would be awesome. So, wow. We finally got the damn door open. Which I'm really happy about. Wait, what's that? Ah, I don't want his armor. You! I don't know what you're lollygagging about. Let's get back to work. Oop, wrong way. Okay. So we need to make one more small trip, and then we will make our way down to where I said we were going to go way back in the beginning of the video. I'm just making preparations because, I mean, I know it's it may seem like I'm getting distracted and wasting time right now, but I'm really not. This place is terribly difficult. It is... Ugh, it's hard. It's very hard. The enemies are incredibly smart. They're powerful. They... They know how to work together. We'll say that. The, the AI's path is very well coordinated. You cannot hide or confuse... You can't hide from the enemies. You cannot confuse them. You literally just... You have to be a tactician to win this place. It's hard. Okay, let me... Are you serious? I just... I thought I picked up large titanite shards. Was it just one? Well, son of a bitch. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was like three. Well, you know what? Let's take a look. It was just one. Damn. Alright, fine. You win. Now, I'm pretty sure I got cut off about four different times trying to say this, but the reason I highly recommend having at least three good weapons with you is because of durability. Durability has become such a pain in the ass in this game, and I mean that. This sword has... my flame long sword has 60 durability, my hate knight sword has 70, and my halberd has 70. They all have roughly about the same durability. That means they have a lifespan. If you look at the... Uh, if you look at my shield and my sword, they have a tiny little red bar beneath them, and that is your durability. I probably should have stated that in the earlier videos, but when you rest at a bonfire, your durability automatically goes back up to 100%. So there's no, you know, constant going to the blacksmith and hitting repair, because that was like an OCD habit of mine in Dark Souls. Constantly repairing every time I get to the box, or every time I talk to Andre, whatever it was. But... Let me access my box... Because I, you really don't want to be carrying stuff that you don't need. Not not down here in this place. You want to be able to swap through your items incredibly fast, and you want to know exactly where you're going. So, 
Um, I will equip the throwing knives and the fire bombs probably, because you want to go into this place with like a full menu. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Yeah, this place is incredibly difficult. Now I need to be human. I don't believe I'm going to summon anybody for this place. But I'm going to try not to die or lose my souls. And it is very easy as I experienced multiple times. Uh, okay, let's go. It's down here. It's called No Man's Wharf. That's it, No Man's Wharf. That... Ugh. This place, it is the hardest place I have experienced in this game thus far. I didn't want to go anywhere further down into the uh, the Grave of Saints. That place was just bad news all over it. But uh, I'm going to hold off on the second boss for Hades Tower of Flame. But in this place, I think we're going to have a lot of fun here. It's a very difficult place. Now, I'm going to stress this one more time before we go running off into this unknown place of hellish torment bring torches i'm being completely serious with you guys right now if you are following my walkthrough step for step or you know watching it and then and then following it after you've watched it or however you do this stop what you're doing right now when you get to this point open your equipment make sure you have at least 30 minutes worth of torches because you are going to need more than 30 minutes of flame in this place the, uh, there is a specific enemy here that will destroy you if you don't have a torch. And then I'll show you exactly who they are when we get to them. Do you see how dark this place is? There's hardly any lighting. There's a guy at the beginning that instantly starts shooting fire at you. Well, fire arrows. This guy sitting here, don't forget him. Just get rid of him when you can. Okay, we got throwing knives off him. Now, don't run straight over there and try to take care of him yet. You want to go over here. Ah! Don't fall like I did. That, wow. Hmm. The dying has already begun. This is not a good sign. This is probably going to be a very painful and frustrating run through this place. I've only gone through it once. I'm fairly positive that I got absolutely everything. And it took me... Don't laugh at me, but it took me about three solid hours of constant running through this place in order to figure out how to actually complete the level. <laughs> it was mainly because of me being stupid, but, I mean, you, you guys you guys know that that's no secret. I'm pretty stupid. Um, I only want to be in human form because I want full health. I need to change my rings, though. Well, no, I want the Silver Serpent Ring. That probably isn't so much important as maybe one of these. I was using that for multiplayer. It's really good for meeting up with other people. Uh, we'll swap that off for the stone ring. Since the amount of damage you're going to be taking in this place isn't, isn't something you can just regenerate from with no problems. So yeah, keep moving because of the guy with the freaking flaming arrows. Okay, now did you see that big thing he just threw? That was... That was like a, a ball of oil. And when you get covered in that, yes, you are correct. It will douse you in oil, and if somebody hits you with fire, say for example the guy with the fire arrows down there, you're done. You are done. It is an explosion, it does a ton of your health, and you are probably going to stand up into the rest of their attack. So when you get face to face with these guys, look, he's still throwing the oil at me. These guys have combos that ends with a kick, and it is such a pain in the ass. Like, I mean, these guys are tough. When you're fighting them in numbers like this, I highly recommend pulling them into a doorway. Mind your lock on, too. Ah, see, he followed me. Yeah. Ugh. I'm already having a hard time. Uh, I don't want their armor. And be careful with these wooden chests. I'm pretty sure I already explained this, but if you destroy a wooden chest before you open it, 
The item that you're going to get is always rubbish by default. There's nothing you can do about it. There's an item up here that we wanted. Don't forget about that. Now, you can sit up here and you can take out that guy with the arrows from range. It would be advised to use these little wooden pillars over here as cover because, I mean, I'll show you what I mean. If you get into his line of sight and he fires at you, if he'll do it, yeah, get behind one of these wooden pillars and it'll block it. See? It gets caught on that. Well, most of the time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out. Let me use my cheap arrows. You got to be real careful, though. Because these guys, these guys are quick. They can shoot pretty fast. And notice how he, he ducks for cover, too. Yeah, just roll out of the way if you have to. It's not worth getting hit. Did I get him? Yes, I got him. Okay, and don't worry about shooting that guy with arrows. He's got a lot more defense and a lot more health. Just... Since your life gems are limited, I highly recommend trying to burn through your flask first. Now, throwing knives are very useful in this place because you can pull enemies. There are some instances in this level where the enemies are actually uh, sleeping before you even get to them, which is free backstabs. But this is why you want a good shield. If you can get them to bounce off your shield, then you know that you're winning. Yeah, you know it's not going to be so bad if, as long as you have stability. Now, most of the uh, watery parts here, like uh, over here for example, you will die if you fall in. But you can tell because there's no ground. There's, there's just a lot of depth to that water. You can tell it's just a murky death. But what you can do is you can break this. These guys, they're going to come after you either way. So, I mean, I can't believe he just missed me. Urgh. This is where the Claranthi ring and the grass come in handy. Stamina management. Master that, and you have mastered Dark Souls. That's all there is to it. Now, most of these guys are dumb. They don't put their shield up until you hit them. And then once they get into range, you can just punish them. Okay, our first pain in the ass enemy is coming up over there. You can go into water that's like, you know, this high. It does impede your movement when you go into this water, but there are items worth getting inside. And, uh... Let's see. Okay, there he is, right over there. You guys see that thing? That gangly creature sticking its head out over there? This is the reason that you want the torch. I'm going to show you exactly why. Get your butterfly ready. And get your weapon ready. If I go near him, he's hostile. He's going to come right for me. These things, I don't know what their deal is, but they have insane reach. And look at the, the damage. They have like 800 bleed in both hands. Pop out a torch. Look at that. He's helpless. You can get as close as you want. He won't even attack. He's going to run away. But be wary. When you corner them, they have no choice but to defend themselves, and they will attack. So he freaks out for the most part. But if you corner him, he'll start attacking. So just hit him as much as you can to get him out of the way. Those things, they can take hits. I'm telling you, they have a lot of defense. And from what I've experienced, they have mild hyper armor. I mean, when I say hyper armor, I don't know if any of you are really familiar with the Souls games by this point. This could be your first Souls game for all I, for all I know, so I'm going to treat you and all the other viewers like you've never played a Souls game. Uh, hyper armor is an instance where you attack an enemy, but your attack does not stop their attack. You cannot stagger them. And we got some Dark Pine Resin there. Uh, yeah, that hyper armor means... Even if an enemy doesn't have poise or anything like that, when you try to attack them, your attack does absolutely nothing. It does damage to them. I mean, the attack is successful. It just doesn't phase them, and their attack continues right through yours, and you get hit with all of the damage from it. The These black gangly creatures that walk around here, I don't know what they're called, 
they have hyper armor on most of their attacks. The only time you can stagger them is if they're not attacking you. So keep that in mind. Now in these little rooms where the guys came sneaking out at us, there are items in some of these. I believe the Dark Pine Resin was the only one over there. But uh, I got that I got that item that was in the room here with the creature. And then this is uh this is a dead end over here. There's nothing you can do. So you have to go up these steps here. Now there is see, he's throwing the oil at me. I'm gonna save my torch for now. And uh, since he has no range whatsoever, we are going to take advantage of that. And the reason I'm shooting this guy from right here is because if I can't pull him, I would like to just kill him. Because there are actually about four more guys waiting up there with him. And they are bad news. So after you kill him, get your shield out and your sword at the ready. There's guys over there. And there are guys that are going to jump down from over here. But before that happens... Ah. Don't want to drop down right there yet. Before that happens, you can step over here and you can get a pretty good look at where you're going to be going. Our main objective is that giant white lantern up there. You need a Pharaoh's Lockstone when you come down here. I'm fairly certain that I have one. Okay, I do. That's good. And I'm pretty sure you can find one down here as well. It gives you one down here by default if you're smart enough to find it. And using the Pharaoh's Lockstone on the contraption down there beneath it will light it. And it will illuminate the whole area, which essentially... Uh, eliminates the need for your torch, but until you light that thing, you are going to need the torch because the purpose of that giant thing up there is to lure off the uh, the long-armed creatures that cause the insane, crazy bleed damage. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sneak up here because there's a guy waiting here, but if you if you run straight up the steps there, he'll just come flying out that door right, right there and he'll, he'll ambush you from your left. You don't want that. So... You know, these guys, one-on-one, -on -one, they're really not bad. They don't have any hyper armor, and if you've got a decent weapon that has, you know, at least... What am I rocking? We'll do... If you have at least around, like, you know, the 200, 250 attack range, they're really not that much of a problem. It's just when they're in numbers, they can stun lock you, and it's just bad news. See, look at that sword sticking out right there. He's just waiting for you to come running up those stairs. I guarantee that blood stain right at the top of those steps, that's probably somebody who is susceptible to this ambush. This guy. <laughs> Let's try this. Eat that. Boom. You're done. Now these guys, ah, they're, he's throwing the oil at me already. I'd take cover behind a wall if I were you. Oh, that was supposed to be a jump attack. Now these guys, the interesting thing about them is that this is the first, there's a dog over there. This is the first enemy in the game, oh, come on, that you're going to experience who knows how to use the dual sword stance. He doesn't just use two of them, he actually knows the power stance for the uh, dual scimitars so he can attack you with uh, both of them at the same time he can guard with them he can do all kinds of stuff that you don't want anything to do with these guys have crazy combos in this place and it's just <laughs> it's difficult when you break that there's like an oil that comes out of it it really doesn't do anything I've experimented with it I've shot fire arrows at it I've thrown fire bombs at these piles they don't do anything unfortunately it just leaves a trail of oil in your footprints when you step in it. Uh, this door does not do anything for the entire level. Don't worry, there's nothing special about it. Alright, am I getting invaded? Okay, good. When it gets really, really quiet, I get this weird feeling in my gut that I'm being invaded. Uh, before you go heading up there, because there's no enemies up there, what I would like to suggest you do is take out this archer way down here because he will shoot arrows down at you, fire arrows, and you've got guys down below him that are throwing those uh, oily sacks at you, those like, I'm not going to call them oil bombs because there's not an explosion with them, but see that, that guy right there, he's got the right idea, he knows that you need to take this guy down with range. You just got to be careful because... You can ah, you can be mobile, 
It's just walking to the side when you have low adaptability, and adaptability does increase your speed of movement when you're walking with the bow. When you have low adaptability like I do, moving, moving with the bow really isn't an option when you want to get out of dodge from another archer. So don't be afraid to tap that O button. It'll throw you out of your stance and it'll knock your arrow off the string and you won't be uh, charging your shot anymore, but it's very worth it. There's a second one over here, but he cannot see you if you're over here. I highly recommend aiming for his head to stagger him. Just like that, you'll do more damage too. Now that he's locked behind there, we can cheap him out at our leisure. Okay, let's move a little bit. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. There we go. That was a perfect headshot. So now that this guy down here is going to be... Uh, he doesn't have a dog with him. And he can't... Uh, never mind. There's another dog. That's, that's an excited little dog down there. Now the dogs are stupid too. He's going to try and find his way up here. And it ain't going to work. So you can take these guys down from up here if you do damage. But see that see that dog is going to come running back here. He's stupid. Down, Rusty. That dude, however, he is smart enough to find his way up here. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's doing it right now. Yep, well, he was trying. Now, their shield is nothing to worry about. I don't think you're going to bounce off of it. But the guys that have nothing but the sword, they have a very annoying kick combo that drains all of your endurance. And I mean all of it. Circling for a backstab on these guys isn't the easiest thing in the world. Because their their attack is always a it's always a sweep. So they can always hit you from whatever angle around them. So you're better off just waiting for them to attack and just, you know, punishing. These guys drop every piece of their armor. Their helmet makes you look like Dragonborn. It's kind of weird. They drop every single piece of armor. I'm pretty sure one of the archers drops the, uh, it's called the Sea Bow. I mean, go figure, right? Because they're like pirates or whatever. But, um, they drop the Sea Bow. They drop, I believe, a long sword or a broad sword, one or the other. And then they drop their shield as well. I know somewhere in this level, it, it suggests that they're bandits because somewhere in this level, you can find the, uh, the brigand set. Which is classic Dark Souls armor. Up along those cliffs up there, like where you see that see that torch up there, and I'll look to the right, that line of cliffs that goes along the side, and it's got that house against it and everything, and then you see an item hanging off up there. That whole cliffside right there is absolutely lined with those dark creatures. In fact, you can see one right there. You see his arm. These things thrive in the dark. If you don't have a torch, they are absolute hell for you because if they hit you with their bleed, it does, I don't know, it's, it's like 500 bleed. It does a lot of health because if they can successfully get you with their bleed, then one more hit is going to kill you. Less than a hit for that. I can't count how many times these things killed me. Here is the Pharaoh's Lock contraption and it is going to illuminate this place with that giant white lantern that's uh, directly above us, I believe. Maybe. I think it's right above us. Let me take a look. Uh, yeah, there it is. Way up there. And you can hear those things moving, too. You can hear them walking up there. It's really creepy and unsettling. But when you use Pharaoh's Lockstone here... Not a Radiant Life Gem. When you use the Pharaoh's Lockstone here, it will illuminate the place. There it goes. Now all those creatures up there, look at them. They're freaking out. They are freaking out. And they start running off to find the nearest cave. In which, uh, when they're in that cave, in that cover of darkness, you still need to pursue them with a torch. Because if there's no light touching them, they are completely hostile. Uh, did I go up here? Yeah, I went up here. I think. Yeah, 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 it was, it was, uh, hey, little tiny sign. Uh, it was this building I didn't go in that I wanted to go in because, uh, there's, uh, there's no enemy up here or anything. I don't believe, I don't believe there's anything up here. I don't know what the purpose of this is, but it's, I suppose it's a good hiding place. If you're, uh, invaded and you need a spot to go, uh, if you need recourse while you're being invaded, you're getting your ass kicked or something. 
you can definitely run up inside there. We already went in here. And there's no enemies up inside that house, so you should be good. Now, let me see. We need to go in here. This is the house where they're sleeping. Unfortunately, I'm an idiot and I ran in and woke them up. But, because there's a barrel in the way right there, look at that. We can funnel him in the doorway and just take him out. You gotta be smart about these guys, because when they're in numbers, they already hit hard as it is. But when they're in numbers, they are a serious problem. You just gotta be really careful with these guys. I'm hoping I find the sea bow because I really need to get rid of this short bow. I absolutely hate this thing. Does not do calamity justice. Okay, this is the brigand set. And we also got the bandit axe. The bandit axe, it takes hefty stats in this game. It surprised me. I think you need 20 strength. Or 18 strength, 5 dexterity. Yeah, 18 strength is a lot of a spring for this thing. But look at the attack on that thing. It's got 125 starting out. It's got a, a fairly slow moveset. But I fought one person in PvP so far with this thing off screen. And it was not pleasant. That thing hits hard. Let's see. I'm, about, I'm at about half endurance with my... Uh, with my sword. Now, the cool thing about repair powder in this game is that it affects all weapons on hand. Everything you have equipped gets uh, repaired from what I saw when I was experimenting with it earlier. So notice how my sword is at about half endurance because of the red bar underneath it and my shield has about a 10% chunk taken out of it. Yeah. If I use the repair powder right now, both of those will go back up to 100%. Now, there's usually a guy right up here, but he dropped down on the steps, as you can see. You gotta watch out for him. And then there's a chest back here. There are, in fact, uh, and it gave you a repair powder, that's nice, and a Titanite shard. There are, in fact, uh, poison chests in this game, but there are also chests that release daggers or uh, arrows. Is I think they were. I couldn't tell. It happened to me once. I think it was arrows, not daggers. But uh, all you really have to do is roll away from the poison ones and just put your shield up if you open up a chest that has uh, crossbow bolts in it. Uh, this doesn't open from this side. You can see the little uh, lever inside there. You gotta pull that. It stays up permanently. It's not like the other gauge that shut right after you pull them open. But where's my life gems? I'm gonna blow through one of those first. You can get a running start and get back over there if you want, but I'm not going over there just yet. Not yet. Uh, hold on. Destroy some of this. I'm not 100% positive that I covered all of this place, but I'm doing my best. Based on what I remember, I'm pretty sure we're doing just fine right now. We're getting most of it. Okay, there's no point in destroying this thing other than wasting durability, right? Okay, now it's time to jump back over. So like I said, that thing up there, it's a godsend for those, uh... It is totally worth your Pharaoh's Lockstone and everything. Don't even, don't even second guess that. But, oh wait, now I know what I was forgetting. I am completely aware of what I was forgetting now. You run down over here. There's an item. Ha! I knew it. Large soul of a proud knight, and you got more silky stones for trades with Snugly. Aren't you glad I remembered? Okay, now getting back up is as easy as cake. You just run back up the steps. We've cleared all the enemies, pretty much. I don't know why that's there. We're gonna find out. And I'm actually running out of time. I usually have dual monitors, so I can see my recording, and... Let's see, what's this? I did it. Of course you did. Uh, I'm used to having dual monitors so I can see my recording on one screen and then I can see my gameplay on the other. But unfortunately, because I'm letting Seth use my, uh, I'm letting him use my other TV so that he can play Dark Souls and have a monitor for his computer, um, I actually have to keep hitting the input button on my remote and looking back at what time I'm at every single time. And my night or calamity, he looks like he's got red eyes right now. That's really badass. But I'm actually going on about uh, 50 minutes right now, so um, 
Let's see. I'm going to cut it here, but we are going to continue just shortly after. I'm just going to record uh, again as soon as I stop recording, and then we will probably finish this place in the next video. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying No Man's Wharf. This is a really cool place. It's just really hard if you haven't done it yet. So, uh, yeah, as always, I will thank you guys for uh, watching, and you guys know it. Of course, I'm going to see you in the next video. I'll see you there.